Hello, dear friends. How are you all doing? My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads and this is the start of a super exciting travel vlog. I am currently in my Airbnb. <laughs> Isn't this rad? This has to be one of the cutest Airbnbs ever. So uh, it is currently 8 p.m. on Friday. Once it's light outside tomorrow morning, I will show you all around a little bit more properly. It is so colorful in here, and I'm sure when the light is coming in, because there's so many windows, it's gonna look so magical. It's so eclectic, there's so much art. This is 100,000% my style. Like they even have a terrarium lamp over here. There's just gonna be a lot of footage. This might be a very long vlog full of just a lot of cozy vibes. I am in Traverse City or kind of outside of Traverse City at Lake Leelanau, which is um, a very kind of popular vacation spot in Michigan. So I am here for work. I am photographing an engagement session tomorrow in Traverse City. So Traverse City is about like a half hour from here. And I booked this session probably a little bit more than a month ago. And I kind of just decided that I really needed a vacation. It had been a long time since I just took any time for myself. Um, so I'm here solo vacationing and I'm really excited. I have been going through a really hard time lately. Life has just been kind of kicking me while I'm down. It's been really hard. Um, it's been very busy and hectic, hence why I haven't been able to maintain a consistent posting schedule, but I just want this time in this Airbnb to be like for me, uh, to rest and restore, be in this beautiful space. I am within walking distance of a grocery store and a lake. So if I'm not cozying up here this weekend, then I'm going to be hopefully reading by the lake. I have brought with me four books <laughs> that I would absolutely love to read. Um, it sounds kind of like a little bit of an insane goal, but I would love to finish a book a day while I'm here because I did bring some pretty short books that I feel like I can fly through. I don't have anything to work on really other than the shoot tomorrow, which is only going to be an hour long, and then editing some sneak peeks. And then I think I might do some self-portraits here too, just because it's so beautiful and I haven't done self-portraits in a really long time. So I brought my camera gear, brought my laptop, my editing stuff, but I also brought a whole stack of books. And basically my priority this weekend is to rest, restore, relax, and read. How many hours was that? Three or four? Um, I'm, I really need it and I'm really excited for it. This place is just so cool. I can't wait to see it when it's light outside because the whole exterior of it is blue. It's actually called the Blue Boho on Airbnb if you want to check it out. Um, it's so vintage and cool. So life is crazy right now. Life is very busy and hectic and it's before the holidays and things just are not really slowing down. Um, I have decided I'm going to be taking most of January off from photography work. just really need to decompress. I miss booktube. I miss reading. I miss just relaxing and remembering the feeling of relaxing. It's been a very long time since I felt that. Um, and I need that. You know, I can't. I'm just running on fumes and on empty and I'm just really ready to embrace 2022 with like setting boundaries and being creative and reading a lot. So I really hope you enjoy this vlog. I'm really so excited. This is, this trip has honestly been like one of the only things kind of getting me through, like just kind of being like, I get to look forward to this time by myself, completely quiet, just me, not in my apartment, <laughs> in a new place that I can explore an adventure or I can cozy up here. This is one of like two living rooms. So let's talk about some books finally. I really hope you're all doing well. I really hope you enjoy this vlog. I am so excited just to get funky with it and have fun and make new memories for myself. Um, so currently friends, let's, we have this beautiful stack of books. Let's bring them out. Currently I am reading this fantastic book called Graves End, A True Ghost Story by Elaine Mercado, RN. This is just a tiny, tiny little book. Very floppy paperback. I honestly love this cover so much, how simple it is with that haunted house kind of thing up top. I found this tiny little thing at Goodwill um, very, very recently. It was after I filmed my December TBR. I didn't really feel pulled to reading the memoir of Marilyn Monroe, which I had originally pulled because my TBR jar told me to read a memoir. Um, so luckily I actually found this one, which is like a memoir and I'll link my December TBR jar challenge down below if you missed it, but this is so creepy. It's giving me the goosebumps and honestly, it's making me very paranoid of this house because upon arrival, there's like a little welcome sheet here. 
Um, and it talks about how this building that I'm in right now, this Airbnb, is one of the oldest buildings in Lake Leelanau, the city I'm staying in. And already there's been like thumping sounds and sounds I really can't explain. And I'm like pausing because this book is so eerie. It's giving me the heebie-jeebies. It's giving me the goosebumps. And I even told my partner before I left, I was like, I don't know if it would be smart for me to be staying at an Airbnb by myself reading a true ghost story. So this is following Elaine. It's written from her perspective. And she and her husband and her two daughters recently moved into a house. And this took place in the 1980s. So she is reflecting on moving into the house, really wanting space. They live in Brooklyn. So it's like one of the last kind of like full houses available <laughs> in Brooklyn. Uh, like to actually buy and not just an apartment. So they're really excited to move in and then shit happens. And it is so freaking creepy. The different like ghosts and ghost stories and things that are happening to this family. And there's something about Elaine's writing style and it might just be because she is not a writer by trade at all. She is actually an RN. So she's in the healthcare field. She uh, went back to school when her daughters were a little bit older and became a registered nurse and she loves it. I think there's something about reading a memoir from someone who is not a writer by trade or by craft. It's just something that they feel like they have a story to share and they start writing it. That is so amazing to me. My two favorite memoirs so far this year have been like that. So far already, this one is like creeping up to a five star. I'm almost halfway through. Um, and then my other favorite was why can't I remember the name of it? Um, something and I don't. It, it's the memoir by Nancy's mom of Sid and Nancy. One of the most heart-wrenching, gut-wrenching memoirs I've ever read. Um, highly recommend that one if you can handle a lot of content warnings and trigger content. But both of them are by women who have never written another book. I'm guessing Elaine hasn't written another book. Um, who are just living life and feel like they have a story that they are compelled to tell. And there's something about that writing style. It's just very to the point. It's like you're sitting in and a friend is just telling you this story over coffee. And I love that. It's not even an audiobook. It's a physical book, but I feel like she's telling it directly to me. And I can feel her fear and I can feel her confusion and her sadness and the things going on in this book. It's just really good. And I'm really liking it. So I am going to be brave. And I'm going to read this tonight. My goal is to finish it tonight in an Airbnb by myself with really creepy sounds. Um, <laughs> pray for me because this is a little scary. Uh, yeah, so I'm really loving this though. I'm really excited to tell you all my final thoughts. But yeah, I'm almost halfway through. I definitely think I can finish it tonight. Other books that I brought with me, we have The One Memory of Flora Banks by Emily Barr. This is the book that I've been really wanting to read. It's just going to be like an action adventure, maybe a YA kind of book that I'm really, really excited about. I'm really excited for this one just because, I don't know, I've just been really kind of craving like a fun romp of a book and just like like speed reading something, something that's like very dialogue, very action-y. Um, I think the last kind of book I read like that might have been like Wicked River, Seven Days of You. Yeah, where it's like almost YA, just a lot of action and dialogue. It kind of just keeps you engaged and engrossed. And I feel like this would be a really fun page turner. So I'll talk more about like their plots when I'm actually reading them. I think because I've already, I feel like I recently did my December TBR. So if you want to know what they're about, like go ahead and check that out. So brought that one along with me. I also brought Lacrimore by S.J. Costello. This is a tiny, um, I don't know, maybe like historical sci-fi fantasy, but very gothic, very macabre, super stunning. I really just want to devour this one, especially because it's like December, winter Airbnb vibes. I feel like this will just be like really cozy and engaging. And I did start the audiobook of this one and I loved it so much that I was like, I really want the physical version so I can really soak up every word because the writing style is so beautiful and the atmosphere is so gothic and I love it. And I recently just finished uh, reading Phantom of the Opera. It was the last book I finished reading and I loved the gothic atmosphere in that one. So I feel like this one would be really good. And this is a very new release as well. It came out last year, I believe. And then lastly, I treated myself while out holiday shopping for my family <laughs> to Junji Ito's Frankenstein manga series. Like, I think 
I think these are stories. Yeah, it's a story collection by Junji Ito. This will be my first Junji Ito book and I'm so excited. I've been eyeing his work for so long and I'm just so excited to read this. Like, look at how stunning this is and it's a hard cover. I have never owned a hardcover manga before. I love it. It's so cool. So I feel like I could fly through this in a day easily because it's a graphic novel and I can just sit here and just go nuts. But like, I love this atmosphere. This was the page I opened up with and I was like, yep, I'm sold. Ships, old, tiny looking things, like a spyglass. Like, I don't know what it is lately. I'm just so, I just, I've always loved like stories on ships and boats um but then if you add the horror element and like oceans and stuff like i don't know oceans actually really really scare me like so scare me but yeah so it's my stack of beautiful books i'm so excited so it is actually pretty cold in this house um i don't think i packed very well <laughs> uh i don't think i packed warm enough um i did bring my electric heated blanket though that was wise. I'm rambling at this point, but I just want to get warm and cozy, take a hot shower, wash this drive and like all the bad vibes off of me and start fresh, get into cozy clothes, start reading. Um, I will be taking a bath at least once on this trip. It's gonna happen. I want to read in the bath so bad. I just don't, I just don't think I can do it right now. I think I'm just a little too freaked out since I arrived here at night and I haven't seen it during the day. I feel like it will feel less creepy in the daytime and then I can go into the nighttime not feeling that creeped out. You know what I'm saying? Anyone, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I'm reading Graves End that I'm like really scared right now of ghosts and paranormal things um, and sounds. <sighs> this is so creepy, you guys. Okay, I'm rambling. I hope you're all doing really well. I'm so excited. Let's go ahead and get warm and cozy and curl up and read. Oh, and then I'll give you a, a tour tomorrow morning. such a weird angle um i am so close to finishing this book it is now a little bit after 11 p.m i'm on page 120 so i only have 50 pages left but it's really freaking me out you guys it's really huh, it's really freaking me out this book and then being in this airbnb that's really old and keeps making weird noises and it's freaking me out i feel like if i finish it though it will make me feel better because on the back of this book, it does say that she continues to live in the once haunted house with her family. But this is scarier than any other horror book I've ever read. Maybe because it's true. And these are things that a real family experienced. And um, I do have to say, one sec. So I'm in bed, right? This fucking door. I hate it hate it. No. I made the mistake of opening that door when I first got here. When I got here when it was dark out. And it's steep stairs, dark, leading up to a freaking attic. Isn't it just common knowledge not to have a bed facing a door? Way too scary for me. Uh-uh. Don't like it. Oh guys, I'm just like freaking myself out. Maybe it's because I'm alone. But like the house makes so many scary noises. And like this book is not helping. I'm such an idiot. Like why did I do this? I have never been more freaked out by a book in my life. And I've never been so like scared to sleep somewhere like by myself. Oh my god. The furnace just kicked on. Do you hear that? How is that not terrifying? <laughs> I'm psyching myself out. Okay. I think I'm gonna just plow through and see what I can get done and maybe like feel some sense of like resolution because I don't think I'm gonna be able to fall asleep.
<laughs> I have coffee here. It's a little cold now because they only have a French press. So I did sleep last night. I actually slept really well, which is great. I did not finish my book until this morning. What the frick? I loved this book, you guys. I loved this book. Oh my gosh. Okay, so loved it five stars. I actually wrote a review on Goodreads. Um, it's like the shortest review ever because I went on there and the only reviews that were highlighted were really bad reviews, one stars, because people don't like the fact that she is not an author by trade, saying it wasn't worth her time to write this book and they wish that she had never bothered. And like, it really hurts my heart. I'm taking it so personally. I'm like, F off people. This is a woman who has a story she does not need to be an author by trade to write a freaking book. Leave her alone. Like, I want to protect Elaine Mercado with my heart. It just breaks my heart, honestly, that people are so rude. This is why I'm avoiding writing bad reviews, I, unless a book really is, you know, bad intentions or super offensive or whatever. Ah, broke my heart. So anyway, um, I will chat about it while I'm getting ready. My couple is on their way. Um, we're meeting probably at noon. It's 10 a.m. now. So I just thought I would get a head start and at least put some makeup on because your girl is breaking out like crazy. Hello. This book, this book, this book. Like I said yesterday, I found it thrifting. Thought, frick yeah, I would love to read a true ghost story. That sounds amazing. Um, I really did not anticipate it being one of my favorite, like, nonfiction books of the year at all. I just thought, oh, this is gonna be cheesy because it takes place in the 80s. It's just this one woman's account of her horror. I know, I loved it. So they buy this house and already it's alluding to the fact that her relationship with her husband is not doing well. They have two daughters and this book really spans at least a decade of living in this house. Uh, the really very odd things from the beginning that were happening, things start to happen really quickly. As soon as they move in, Elaine, our author and narrator, was so excited to finally have a washer and dryer. Girl, same, I can't wait for the day I have a house and can get a washer and dryer. Well, kind of like the first few days, she was so excited to use her washer and dryer and she felt presence. She felt like somebody was watching her. It was this eerie, like just, things out of the corners of her eyes, this feeling that somebody was like breathing on the back of her neck, like just really eerie stuff. And then things really catapulted when her daughter started validating her experiences and being like, yeah, we're seeing this mist. They called it the mist. It was like this brown shape of a person in kind of like this smuggy form. And he would just like come stand right at the entrance of their bedrooms. And so she would hang out in her kids' rooms, not telling them, like, I'm trying to see the mist for myself. Uh, but one day she did see it. So it wasn't just her that was experiencing these things. It was also her daughters. They started seeing these light orbs flying around the ceiling. And her daughters were like, we've been seeing them for months. Where have you been? Um, they never leave the top of the ceiling. And if they go into another room, they dissipate and then they'll come back. They called it the light show because it happened so often. Then our poor... <laughs> Our poor Elaine, she starts experiencing horrific sleep paralysis. You know, when she started describing the symptoms, I was like, well, that's just sleep paralysis. Like, that's not necessarily a haunting. There are a lot of people who are plagued with sleep paralysis, and it's awful. But she called them suffocating dreams because she definitely noticed a difference between sleep paralysis and this. This felt like somebody was actually pinning her down and then would start touching her arms and the insides of her thighs. Very disturbing. Um... She would just get so scared and it would happen up to like three or four times a night, four to five times a week. Oh, so she was like not getting any sleep. She was super exhausted for work. It wasn't until they had a holiday party um, that they invited some friends over that her supervisor at work was like, pulled her over and was like, did you know that your house is haunted? And Elaine was like, I thought it was just our family. I didn't think that outsiders would be able to notice this stuff. They also noticed um, really weird smells in the kitchen. It would either smell like rotting death or roses, like freshly cut roses. So there's just like a lot of weird things happening. And at this time, her husband uh, was not a good person. <laughs> like he was not validating her experience at all. Like he was like, this is so stupid. We're not gonna sell the house. She was desperate to sell the house. Elaine was truly terrified to be here. I mean, same girl. Um, and her daughters really were not 
they were scared, but they were not as scared as her mom. So the book is a lot of reflection as to like Elaine trying to unpack why these things scare her so much and why her daughters are able to live with it and be fine. She felt a lot of guilt and shame that she couldn't protect her daughters from it. She felt a lot of guilt and shame that she was so scared and so fearful of it where it seemed like everyone else was able to cope just fine. Which I just thought brought up so many interesting things. Um, Elaine also does talk about her religion and spirituality in this book, which I really loved because she came from a super like evangelical, like, kind of like the church, like under the tent where there's like possessions and people writhing on the floor. And it scared her so much as a kid that she left the church. So she talks very openly about her spirituality. She raised her daughters with like the more historical facts about like, Jesus and the Bible, but like they didn't go to church. They didn't have a faith. So having it from that non-denominational kind of perspective, is that the right word? I'm so out of, I, I don't know anything about spirituality or religion really. Yeah, I just really enjoyed that. It didn't come from this place of like severe, almost religious fear. Um, she was able to put that part and piece of her past aside and not really fear it as like, the devil's work or anything like that. So they would have people over and people, especially her kids' friends, would be like, I am never sleeping here again. They would leave in the middle of the night because of what they were experiencing. Um, throughout the entire book, Elaine and her daughters move rooms constantly in the house. They start experiencing sleep paralysis or what they call the suffocating dreams like every night. So they would move into like a different bedroom and they started renovating the house to create more bedrooms. So it was constantly this game of musical chairs every night, getting a suffocating dream, moving into the living room. A lot of times they would all just sleep on the living room floor. At this point, her and her husband divorced and separated. And it's just wild that their whole lives were completely like just destroyed by these hauntings. It was so fascinating and so terrifying and that's why it scared me so much and uh their cats are doing weird shit that was the part where i started getting really really freaked out last night was when their cat was doing weird shit i was like oh no <laughs> no and then they started seeing like fully formed almost like flesh and blood kind of ghosty apparitions and that's when <laughs> that's when Elaine was like, oh my god, I want to move, but it was never the right time to move. It was not a seller's market, so she was just like freaking out and didn't know what to do. Yeah. Loved it. Loved this book. It was so eerie. It's only 170 pages. Highly recommend if you are fine with a book feeling like a conversation with a friend. It's not beautiful writing. It's not poetic. It's not bleh. like it's just an account of this woman's life and what she experienced. And it feels like you're just having coffee with a friend and listening to her talk. Like I felt her fear. It was so palpable. And I was like, girl, you're freaking me out. <laughs> Hands down the scariest book I've ever read in my life. And I loved it. So that is that. Just so creepy. Highly recommend. I hope I didn't like spoil too much, but like read it if you definitely want to get the heebie-jeebies and if you want way more in depth about like what was happening and how things were resolved and what this stuff ended up being so eerie so creepy so yeah i am getting ready for my shoot i have to travel a half hour out to traverse city this morning yeah if you're ever in michigan definitely highly recommend uh traverse city it's really close to sleeping bear dunes national lakeshore gorgeous place yeah i'm having so much fun already finished a book this morning feeling really good oh i forgot to add my sparkles i forgot to add my sparkles on my eyelids which one should we do today i'm kind of thinking the impressive it's very bold mixed with a little of the vip let's do let's do that let's do it sparkles mm. oh yeah just a little pow mm. <laughs> Feeling it today, friends. Feeling good. Okay, I'll give you guys a tour. So this is where I've been coming in. This is the kind of side door. There is a front door though too. Um, yeah, it is very old. It's one of the oldest buildings here in Lake Lelana. So you come in and then boom, there's the kitchen. So cute, small, adorable, exactly what I need. Love it. Um, then we have the bathroom here. Even the 
like rug here is cute like literally everything in this airbnb is the cutest they did such a great job with styling it making it nice and let's go in here this is my room it's where i slept and uh you have this beautiful view of this house that just makes me feel like i'm in like the english countryside or something this is the terrifying door that i mistakenly opened when i first arrived and i will not be going up there it's just a stairs to the attic and i hate it we go in here oh this is living room one slash dining room so super gorgeous i just love the orange and the art and the plants and then we turn around here beautiful wall space they have such great taste in art and eclectic things and then this beautiful little couch that's my bookmark on there um love this it's just like so many different options to sit and hang out like i love it love it and then you go in here and this is the other living room are you freaking kidding me are you kidding me i'm in love i <laughs> just i love it so much and then this little oasis space right here is like one of my favorites so i'll take you all this way and show you yeah so they have this entire kind of like windowsill built-in plant shelf which i'm sure these plants just absolutely love this space with all this light and these green walls and the plaid furniture look at this art their books beautiful paintings everywhere couch my heated blanket and then this is the little sanctuary area that i love i just love this shot right here the archway of this door like this one here like bum, bum, love it that's the front door yeah, it's just so cool. I love it here. back from my shoot it went so well oh my gosh it was so much fun and i can't believe the weather difference she was half an hour away in traverse city and it was snowing there like a winter magical wonderland so we got these beautiful snowy photos i'm actually importing the images right now and i'm gonna be editing them later tonight and I, i'm just so thrilled this couple is absolutely amazing so stunning so much fun like i was like just close to peeing my pants and laughing like they were just so much fun we just went all over the place and it was it was it was magical um yeah i'm home i am freezing it's very cold in here i am preheating the oven for some pizza and yeah i think i might curl up in the green living room and eat and get warm put on my heated blanket it's very cold in here because it's an old house it's uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna be relaxing the rest of the day and then I have the entire day today to just kind of edit and do what I want and I'm going to be starting the one memory of Flora Banks today and I'm so excited. Uh, so this one is about a 17 year old girl named Flora and she doesn't have any short term memory so her mind resets several times a day um, until she kisses Drake, her best friend's boyfriend, the night he before he leaves town and that one, that's one memory that she can't forget. Uh, convinced that Drake is responsible for restoring her memory, Flora goes after him on an impossible journey to Norway to piece together the shards of her fractured mind. But from the moment she arrives in the Arctic, nothing is quite as it seems, and it's up to Flora to be brave if she wants to learn the truth about herself once and for all. Yeah, okay, so someone did say on the back here, one of the best YA novels I've read in a long time. Perfect for fans of both young adult romance and psychological thrillers. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this one. I feel like it's going to be so much fun, and that's exactly what I what I want. And even on the cover here, it says, it's not a lie if you can't remember the truth. I am ready for a YA romp. It's been a while. I'm really excited. Yeah, so I'm going to start this, and I'm hoping I can, like, fly through it because it'll kind of keep me gripped. That's what I'm hoping for. Fingers crossed.
<laughs> friends what the hell pizza <laughs> is a no um first i preheated the oven and then it blew a fuse in the kitchen. Just the whole fuse was gone. So I messaged the Airbnb people. I was like, yo, do you have access to a fuse box? I can fix it, it's fine. Um, they were like, we're so sorry. <laughs> Here's where the fuse is, it's in our basement. And I was like, I don't wanna go in your basement. <laughs> I'm too creeped out to go into your basement, okay? Um, fuse magically came back on. I don't know how. It blew all the light switches. It just came back on. I don't know what happened. Um, not helping my haunted feeling in this place. Uh, then I preheated the oven and the second I opened the oven, all the smoke came billowing out. So I don't think that oven has been cleaned in a while. It instantly set off the smoke detectors in the house. I could not shut them off. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I can't make my pizza because I let it cool for a little bit. I opened up the front door, even though it's so cold in here, I opened up the front door just to like get the air circulating, cleared it up. I opened the oven one more time with the door open. Instantly the smoke detector went off again, so I just closed it and it is just gonna be a no-go for the oven thing But I really wanted pizza. I really need something really hearty and really warm right now because I just spent like two and a half hours outside and 30 degree snowy weather, so I just found that there's actually a pizza place like a five minute walk from here Which is so cool because it's such a small town, but the house is like right in the small town So everything's within walking distance. I'm gonna grab my book put on my coat again, and we're gonna go have pizza solo at this place. And I'm really excited and we can go around the town too. So that's my plan, let's go ahead and do it. My photos are still uploading, so they'll just be, hopefully they'll be done by the time I get back. I'm excited. Oh, that's my check-in, let's go get pizza. <laughs>
friends. Um, I thought I would update you all while I wait for my ramen to cool down. I am freezing. <laughs> I have been walking around all day in 32 degree weather, uh, which is freezing if you're not a Fahrenheit user. Um, yeah, I spent all day walking around. I slept in a little bit, I journaled, and then I was like, yeah, I'm feeling a little restless. Let's go for a walk. So I walked all the way down Main Street here in this tiny town that I'm staying in and found a coffee shop. So I got a super dark chocolate mocha, delicious. And then I was like trying to find, I kept seeing all these signs saying like Lake Lilana access, like park, beach access. So I just kept like walking down all these streets trying to find the actual lake access because I just wanted to sit at a park outside even though it was so cold. I don't know, I personally love the cold um, to a point. I, I don't like staying frozen when the cold is in my bones and I can't warm up, but I just love, I love cold winter walks. Ah, oh, God, it's the best. It's just so exhilarating. So I kept trying to find stuff I could not. Um, walked past a bunch of shops, a lot of antique places around here. They're all closed because it's Sunday and I ran into no one. <laughs> it is so dead out here, maybe because it's like winter. But yeah, everything is like closed down. So I wasn't able to find anything other than the coffee shop though. So I drove to a park. I sat by the water with my coffee. It was really quiet and calm and cold. And I don't know, I just got to like sit for a little bit outside and that was really nice. And when I got to the park, I realized I was in Fishtown, uh, which I went to, I'll link it down below, my travel vlog with my mom earlier this summer when we took her van to Fishtown and we stayed in all these places kind of up here in Northern Michigan. I had no idea I was that close to where we were before. Yeah, I ran into Fishtown. I ended up going into Lelina Books, uh, this cute little bookstore. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna warm up and then I'm gonna continue reading The One Memory of Flora Banks, which I am loving so much. Last night, I think I got a little bit over 100 pages through. So I'm gonna read more of that and then hopefully I can wrap it up when I finish the book tonight. That is my goal. I just wanna get super warm and cozy, cuddle up on the couch. Hey friends, I've been home for a few days now. I'm actually editing this vlog. I'm home safely and another vlog will hopefully be coming to you all again soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I know I did. I did end up finishing the One Memory of Flora Banks while I was there, so I'll be chatting about that way more in my December wrap up, but I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you enjoyed this vlog and I will see you all again very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!